So Ralph, last time I was here, the motor was on the floor and already I come back not too many days later and you've already mounted it. Um, now I know that this particular motor it is modified and that yeah. is why we can actually fit it other than a standard one. Can, can you explain to so, me and the audience what's modified about it? What makes it be able to work on this particular What you think um, you've got? You think you've got an audience? Anyway, go ahead. the Desert Rover is standard designed to go into a rear axle unit where it directly drives the two half shafts that drive the two back wheels. Right. Two drive shafts coming out of the complete unit. So that Tesla unit has got the motor at one end. Yep. Then the gearbox, which reduces the, the speed down yep. and increases the torque. And a differential, and that splits the drive between the two back wheels on the Tesla. Right. On the other side of the casing, you've got the inverter and the power electronics. Yeah. Yep. So all of that is in one lump, all bolted together. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to directly drive your differential. That's right. So first of all, we've got the problem that the Tesla unit has got a differential in it already. So we'd have to, we could lock that up. I could take it apart, I could weld it up and stop it spinning. But the gear ratio is completely wrong because that Tesla unit is designed to go around at a speed that matches your wheel speed. Okay. But here we're going through your differential which drops the speed by three and a half times before going to the wheels. Right. So what we'd end up with is if we directly drove that rear axle with a Tesla unit, with a welded up diff or something like that, yeah. then we'd be going three times slower. The acceleration would be amazing. Okay, but the max speed would be max like speed 60. Would be 40 miles an hour or something wow. like that. Wow. <laughs> okay. So what we've got here, and also the package is quite large. It's a, it's a big lump there with bits sticking out in all directions. And one of the problems we've got here is getting something that fits in the space. Something yes. that's the right shape to fit in there. Nothing fits in here. Exactly. And those bits sticking out with the differential and everything just mean that we'd end up with it right at the front there, with right. the long drive shaft, and it, and it would be the wrong ratio anyway. So what we've got here is a Tesla motor that's been unbolted from the other parts. So the inverter is here as a separate item. Okay. So that's got a new front plate on it to close it off where it used to be in that casing there. Yeah. So the inverter is separate, that's the first thing. So that's shortened the whole thing. Right. Then where the gearbox is, different cogs in it to change the gear ratio. And instead of that going down to the differential, it just comes out on a, on a drive flange. So that's a, a flat plate that spins around on the end of, the, of a shaft. Yeah that we can bolt straight onto the prop shaft yep. that drives your rear axle. Right. So that whole gearbox part of this has been extensively modified. Different gear ratio, so you've got the right top speed yep. and acceleration that the tyres can actually deliver. Um, and it's, the whole thing's much smaller and lighter. Okay, so the, basically the motor goes straight, from the, uh, straight onto the prop shaft rather than going through the gearbox. It's still got a gearbox because okay. this spins up to about 10,000 RPM. Well, so I want 10,000 RPM. <laughs> Which would give you a theoretical speed that this would never reach due to aerodynamics. So it would just be pointless. And okay. your acceleration would be quite poor. So have you done the calculations to work out what the top speed would be? Yes. Hmm? Yes, I have. Excellent. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you though. Why not? Come on now. I don't want to encourage you. Uh, okay, well, to be honest, I never go top end in the, the TBR roof anyway, because I've got children. Yeah. So. To be honest, you're looking at about 150 mile an hour. Okay. So that, that is kind of similar to the TBR Griffith. Yeah, okay. My life insurance isn't very good, so I don't <laughs> think uh, I'll ever uh, get quite close to that. What, have you worked out the 0-60? Of course you have, yeah, haven't you? Well, it does depend on the total weight of the vehicle, so we've made some assumptions. And the tyres, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the tyres are absolutely crucial, and how well the suspension works. And one of the difficulties you've got with this chassis is the rear suspension isn't very good. No. Well, you said you were going to uh, enhance the so rear. So we're going to enhance it. So all we can do is muck around with some of the links and the sort of bushes that it uses on the rest of it to try and make, it, make the back wheels point in the right direction more of the time. They have a tendency when you accelerate hard for the back wheels to start pointing in. Right, that doesn't sound effective no. or efficient. Um, so the things we can have a look at on that. Yes, it's that time again. Like and subscribe time. So if you haven't, please get involved. Really helps the channel. 
Uh, also, don't forget, as per my last episode reminder, Nebworth Hall um, Petrol Hedonism Show. We've got a charge heads group there for EV conversions and modified EVs. Come and get involved. Let us know you're coming by either buying a ticket and put yourself down for the charge heads group or let us know on the Facebook forum, the website, or all of them. So uh, things are getting really exciting in this build and yeah, it's, it's really shaping up. But enjoy the rest of the episode. Someone put Coney suspension on this car. I could tell because I saw this red thing here, although the bush is a bit done for. Coney suspension. Brilliant. Because the 0 to 60 is quite quick, mm. slight changes to those things make an enormous amount of difference the amount of grip that you get pulling away from the line. And it's those first few seconds of accelerating away. Mm. If you've got grip, you can get a great 0 to 60 done. If the grip's compromised because the suspension's not working properly, you'll just get rubbish 0 to 60 times. Go on, throw a number out there. Go on, be brave. It'll be in the four second mark. That, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, sounds pretty good. I'd be happy with that. It's going to be nipping. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just uh, hope it's going to uh, go around a corner once I, once I get there as well. But what TVR? That's true. The other one's a bit dodgy like that. Sound wise, uh, what's it going to sound like? Because do you know what? Recently, after doing, uh, doing a show, everyone's like yeah but I miss the noise yeah but I miss the noise and I think it's just ingrained with us that we yeah, like the sound it really is and we think oh it must be fast because it sounds like you know a Formula One car little does the person know it was actually a Vauxhall Corsa with a big bore four exhaust so uh, yeah yeah anyway um, we're doing various things so normally when we mount the motor we put isolating rubbers on it so that it doesn't transmit any of the whine and noise into the chassis Right. What we're doing on yours, because you want it noisy, is we're doing everything the other way. Excellent. This is much more how we would build a race car rather than a road car. Okay. So you get all of the whine and noise from the gears, from the motor, from the inverter, from the water pumps. The whole thing, I think it's going to sound like a TIE fighter. I feel like I've got a bit of a bass face going on here. That would sound, sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, that sort of noise, that's right up my strata. So what we'll see is, because no one's ever done that with these before that we're aware of, mm. so what we'll do is once we find out what noise it does make when we're doing the road <laughs> test, we'll find out if we need to refine that. In yes, and yes. It from there. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it's always going to be quieter than all the, you know, the popcorn maps that are out there with their pops oh. and bangs. Oh. Shoot That's me now. Ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's looking looking good so far. So what's the what's the next thing now you've got the uh, motor mounted? Well, even with that motor with a short bit, it's actually ended up pushing further forward than we would have liked. Right. Because there's bits sticking out. We've got to get uh, pipes onto the coolers, the lubrication system. Those are really important. So to get clearance to those, the whole thing is going slightly further forward than we would have liked. And there's bits on your chassis that get in the way of bits that stick out of this. Right. So it's quite annoying. What we did want to do is sink a load of batteries down there. Right. Uh, but now they're going to have to move somewhere else. So we're now looking at where we put things like the charge controller, the DC DC converter, the inverter, um, and where the batteries can end up going. Yeah. Well, I know you've obviously started the battery box, which uh, I come to look at the other day. So, yeah, yeah it'd be interesting what, how it all comes together. But uh, I guess we'll see that next time. Loads of work to do, but it's looking really, really encouraging. It's a right. good first step. Lovely. Good man. Yes.